package that depends on any version. There's a nine package that depends on any version of the point package. Okay. Now um, I have already installed one instance of each of these packages: one for king, one for knight, one for pawn, and they depend on each other. Let me demonstrate this. So it lists the three packages, the three instances that are installed currently in the user database. I have more, more packages installed, but it, um, this minus minus user only shows what's installed in the user database. Now, um, let's suppose um, let's suppose there are two more packages at added or released. There's a queen package. I mean, um, that depends on any version of a knight package. And it depends on specifically version 2 of this newly updated pawn package. Okay? Now, um, let's try and install um, this pawn package first. Okay, works fine. So, what we um, should have is um, something like this. We have this pawn package. Oh, and I have to put a disclaimer here. Normally, if you wanted to install the queen package, you wouldn't do this bottom up by first installing its dependencies. You would hit um, type cover install queen and then you would figure out the dependencies it needs. But uh, these toy packages aren't unpackaged, so this is impossible. And also, from what I've heard, um, package is down, so it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, what we want is something like this. We want uh, the queen package that depends on an instance of the knight package, which in turn instance, um, depends on this new instance of the pawn package. But this is the whole point. These two instances of knight one conflict. So the only options are either to not install the queen package or to override this other knight package and thereby breaking the king package and everything that, that depends on this. Um, and the point of my project was, or our project was, to fix exactly this problem. So um, let's see what happens. Um, if I install a knight. Oh. Um, it says it would, uh, it warns me that installing this knight uh, reinstalls the version and it changes its dependencies from point one one to point two, okay? And um, the king package would be broken, right? It still, um, it still tells me this. So this problem was known. But it wasn't fixed, it was just, uh, we just got this morning. But if we actually force installation, um, right now, uh, we can see that a second, a second version of um, the night package is installed. Okay, and it depends on, um, Whoa. <laughs> okay, so we have two instances of a night package, one depending on point two and one depending on point one. This is cool, um, because this means we can now install the queen package. Okay, um, so, yay, yay. right, yay. <laughs> We have two instances of night and can install the king package. That's cool. Now, what happens if I try to install another instance of the king package? Because it can depend on any instance of night, which one is it supposed to choose, right? So, um, what happens in this system? Should it choose the one that um, the other one depended upon, or the new one? Um, the way it's implemented right now is uh, that it picks um, the latest instance of a, a package that was um, installed when it died. So we have now one king depending on the one line and one on the other. Okay. Right. So it looks like this. Um, <clears throat> and 
what I've also implemented is some prototype of some form of garbage collection. Um, to, because we now have uh, redundant instances of king and knight. I've implemented some heuristic that would try to uh, determine which packages are not really needed and would suggest them for removal. In this case, uh, this is the king package as well as the knight package. Right? These two are redundant. Okay, now how this is now the second part, how is this implemented? The install location is customizable customizable in your config file in Kabal. And previously it the library the location where the library got installed was package ID slash compiler, for example, wrapper version GFC 7.4. And um, we changed this to package ID um, ha uh, minus uh, um, this new this new variable dollar unique. And this dollar unique is uh, resolved during configuration to a big random integer to make uh, this instance actually unique. But only Kabbal install that, does this. Um, the normal Kabbal library does not know anything about this new variable. So if you install stuff with Kabbal, not with Kabbal install, as, as in run Haskell, setup.hs, and so on, uh, you might still get um, problems with instances overwriting um, existing instances. You also That's got rid of the GFC version? Subdirectory? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because it's um, uh, multiple pack instances compiled with different versions of compiler get inside to unique your locations anyway. And I don't find this, this information that important, but it's debatable what to uh, insert into the, the path and whatnot. Okay, now um, this, uh, another problem is that now the default install directory for Kabbal install and for Kabbal is different because Kabbal install knows about this new variable and Kabbal does not. And we have one big constraint on uh, the, the intel install location because uh, there's a feature of GCC that <coughs> Um, bakes the install location into package paths, the install location has to be known at compile time. Okay, we have to keep that um, in mind. Another thing that needed to be changed is the install package ID. Uh, it was previously the name of the package, the version, and then the ADI hash that is determined um, after compilation. Um, now it's, <laughs> um, it's been changed to be the name of the package, the version, the ADI, and then another big random number to make it unique, to guarantee that it's unique. Um, this number is the same as in the uh, install location and it's determined by Kabbal install during configuration. Then it's passed to Kabbal and Kabbal uh, appends the string up there to determine the, the normal, the, the previous um, install package ID. Um, and as I said, this cannot be used as the install location because the ABI hash is only known after compile time, but the install location has to be known before compile time. Okay, then um, a field had to be added to uh, the install package info that had a, is a basically a timestamp. And all three, Kabbal install, the library, Kabbal the library, and GHC, use this timestamp to determine which instance to pick when in doubt. <clears throat> and um, I'm not sure if shadowing in GHC still works because uh, now shadowing used to be um, used to um, decide which instance to pick, and it used to do this based on uh, package database steps. So, user um, a package in the user, user database would be preferred over one that's in the global database. But now that we have multiple versions in, in even in one package database, and now that we might even have multiple package databases, because, because sandboxing is uh, becoming more and more popular, we have this other Google Summer Code project. Um, I think this whole shadowing and GFC's package selection needs, needs to be uh, rethought somehow. And uh, another change is that GHC uh, package used to overwrite, um, used to remove any other instance with the same version from the package database upon registration. And the change was that right now it does not remove anything. Unless, unless I think, <coughs> uh, you insert a package with an ex existing installed package ID. Because then it actually, um, the package database is just a list of files. By uh, the na their name is their install package ID, and um, in this case it would be overwritten. I don't know. Um, this shouldn't shouldn't um, occur because this random string is appended, but um, I'm sure it should probably warn us something. 
And then there's this, this cover remove, a uh, so, uh, proof of concept garbage collection. And how it works, it suggests all unnecessary packages for removal. And unnecessary is defined as all packages that, um, um, that okay, um, <laughs> a package is unnecessary if all packages that depend on it are themselves unnecessary. This includes the case that um, no package depends on this package, and also and if it is not the latest instance of its version, so as to always keep one version, um, one instance of each package version combination. We saw this with um, this example. Form <coughs> one was not suggested for removal because it really wouldn't have any instance of this specific um, form. But Anders already already um, told me that he probably would want this instance to be removed as well. This is, as I said, just a proof of concept and just a, a prototype. Um, <coughs> but as it is implemented right now, it, it does not even uh, unregister the packages from the package database. Uh, and, and, and removing them from the file, from the file system is um, something that's for the future as well. Okay, now, the original idea was... The original um, idea was that we uh, gather all the build inputs used to, um, to build a package, then hash them, and then we index the instance by this hash. Cool idea, but uh, there are some, uh, there's, there are a few problems with this. First, if we um, if we conflate all this information that we have into one hash, then although two packages might be usable together, we do not detect this because um, we only keep compare for exactly the same build inputs by comparing the hashes. So we might miss some, uh, some possible uh, re reuse. And another uh, problem is, uh, I have to tell them, sorry, let's say, theoretically there are two modes for recover install to determine which packages to use. First, uh, it could um, not consider the install packages at all, just look what is on package, make an install plan, and then if per chance some instances are already installed, then we use them. And the second mode would be, to actually take into account what's installed and craft the um, install plan after after um, it knows what, what the user already has, as so as to facilitate more reuse. And um, if we only store a hash and not this this whole build information, then mode two is impossible, because we cannot look at the installed packages and and, and uh, check for check. Uh, uh, their properties if all, everything is just stored in a hash. So we would have to really make the install plan only with the packages on package and then we can check if um, they are already installed. So we would have to store all the information in the install package info anyway and so using a hash would only be um, an optimization. And I'm very careful with premature optimization. Okay, also um, if we would identify packages with uh, just a cover hash uh, that's not uh, that's not uh, enough to be unique because um, if um, compilation is not deterministic, so even if we compile the exact same build inputs, the result might be different um, in the sense that some I don't know not binary compatible anyway. So there wouldn't be a problem if we have ever compiled um, with certain build inputs once per machine and then looked this up. But as we have multiple package databases, there might be two instances with the same build inputs that are in fact incompatible. So we would have to um, append some random number or, or something to the hash anyway to make the, the instances really unique. Um, and another problem is um, Cabal install makes this install plan that has uh, instances uh, that has packages to be installed from package, but also it contains already installed packages. And uh, we would like to determine which packages to take by giving the install package ID. Um, currently, it just gives, uh, it just determines, uh, it, it just defines which package to um, use by using the package ID, not the install package ID. The problem is um, <coughs> the install package um, ID is only known after compilation, so it's not known for all these packages that, that are to be installed from from package. Um, so somehow, after the installation, the install package ID that the package actually has has to be communicated back to a Kabbal install so that the, all the dependencies of the to-be-installed packages can be updated to um, depend on this new instance. There's a workaround currently. Um, packages that are installed from package that are not previously installed 
are just um, identified with a package ID, and I rely on um, the instance that was pre that was just installed during the execution of this install plan to be the latest one. Okay, but that's not that's not safe at all. That's just a workaround. Okay, now for the future we would uh, like to have more fine grained built inputs, like um, which backend is used, but. What I find very important is whether a package was compiled with profiling or without, or uh, uh, with what, what was the other thing? The, the, uh, dynamic link, dynamic um, to a dynamic labyrinth, right? And then, obviously, this garbage collection has to be improved. The, the idea is, if you work on a package and you, you um, couple install it to test it, to test it, then you get multiple instances. I mean, many, many instances of the same package, and this is the main use case for the garbage collection algorithm I, um, I thought of. And Andres somehow still wants a Kaval hash, I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Discussion? That's it. So we have loads of time. Yeah, yeah right. Very Johan? Oh, no. Every time when somebody bumps into a deficiency in Kaval package managing features, that person is reminded by the community that Kaval is not a package manager but a build system. Therefore, a question why add package managing features to Kaval at all? Uh, okay, I have a um, different opinion on this. I think Kaval is not a package manager but it tries to be. So it, it has already has this um, package storage functionality, and since people are used to it, people use it, and so uh, we have to maintain it. Basically. So what what would you suggest? Use a different package manager for managing Haskell packages, or uh, what I'm saying? I'm just wondering if the excuses uh, will ever stop that Kabel is just a build system. Ah, right. I, I, I don't know what would be a good answer to this uh, clarification, but since, as I see, Kabel now can remove packages. Right, right, right. I'm right. just wondering if this excuse will ever go away because there are other deficiencies as well. You mean in, in some time people will say Kabel is a package manager, right? Yeah. This might happen. Might happen. Uh, first, a comment on that. I think we say it's not meant to replace other package managers. While working on Kaval packages as a developer, it's fine to use as a package manager. But we're not trying to be your OS package manager. Uh, I had one comment about garbage collection. I think Kaval has a um, feature where it records the name and version of the packages you explicitly mention when you Kaval install in the, in the world file. And you can use these as roots for garbage collector. So, which means everything someone ex explicitly installed, you'll keep, and everything that's not need it anymore you get to away. Okay, but um, the use case for this was kind of installing the library you're working on and as far as I know you explicitly install it every time so. Okay, it's a matter of workflow so you can work on library without installing it but if yes, if you want to install libraries that are yeah. in progress, yes, then you cannot uh, garbage collect them. But thanks. So I'll back that up. When working on DPH, I'll it's broken into seven different libraries, and I have seven tabs open in my um, terminal. I have Kabel install, Kabel install, Kabel install, Kabel install. Okay. Lots of different versions. So. We're solving this problem yeah. separately. Uh, any other questions, comments? Uh, I just want to say thanks for, for working on this. We've been thinking about this problem uh, for years and years and years now. Uh, and it's really great that, uh, that you've done so much work uh, this summer on the GSOC project uh, to, uh, to get it, to, to push it forward. So thank you very much.